Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. If you're looking for new restaurants to try over the next few weeks, our friends from Sauce Magazine have you covered with this month's hit list. Joining me to talk about the latest openings in the region are managing editor Catherine Claney and staff writer Matt Sorrell. Catherine, Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So this was a really big month for restaurant openings, and the biggest opening of them all had to be Indo. Can you guys tell us what made this restaurant so highly anticipated? Well, the the big thing is that uh, Nick Bogner, who is the chef slash co-owner, uh, has um, had a really big year. He was a James Beard semifinalist this year for Rising Star. Um, Niponte, his family-owned restaurant out in the Baldwin area, has been receiving like rave reviews, um, you know, and national attention from places like Bon Appetit. Uh, so everybody was really excited to see his. This is his first solo venture. It's just him. So uh, it was a it's a hot ticket. Do you think it lives up to the hype? I personally, I do. I was able to go there and um, just it, it's. You can still get his signature nigiri, um, which is he's known for, obviously, but. He's doing a lot of different stuff, too. Like, um, one of the things I really enjoy was his shrimp toast, which is on U- Union Loaf for Bread. Mm. You know, they're neighbors, obviously. Um, Best that was bread fantastic. In town. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Fantastic. Um, he also had a whole fish preparation. It's a, a fried madai, which some people have told me it's snapper, but it actually looks like it's a sea bream, which hmm. I don't know what the differences are, but there you go. <laughs> um, but it's a whole fish preparation. I mean, it's got like, you know, it's if you. It's got the eyes, it's got the teeth, it's got the whole thing, uh, but it's just absolutely fantastic. It's tender, uh, it's got a mango sweet chili sauce, and it's served with like a little papaya salad. Just, yeah, you can't go wrong there, for sure. <laughs> One of my favorite things is that this are, they're also open for lunch service, yeah. um, which was really exciting. We went the other week, um, and they're smaller portions, they're definitely more lunch size. The prices are also more lunch appropriate, but everything from like, we started with um, chips and dip, which were actually uh, shaved pieces of lotus root that were then mm-hmm. fried and served with like a fancy French onion dip is what I kept calling it but it was covered in um salmon eggs on top which was really felt very decadent and then um they had chirashi bowls so whatever fresh fish he happens to have that day he sort of makes you a small rice bowl with lots of fresh uh, raw fish and fresh vegetables Mm. and then if you want something heartier they had a beef short rib noodle dish which was again not a huge portion a perfect lunch size but the short rib was incredibly tender the noodles were perfectly cooked it was just a nice little lunch getaway and it's more counter service at that time so you're in and out pretty quickly and a good price point for lunch i think so yeah it's i mean it's a little on the pricier side just because of the the quality of fish that he's sourcing in but for for lunch yeah it was it was still a, a very reasonably priced lunch Matt, can you tell us a little bit about this next restaurant on your hit list? Um, This also has a star chef who I think some of us didn't know what his next move would be. He suddenly popped up at? Yeah, at Alta Calle. So uh, we're talking about uh, Teo Carrion, uh, who uh, most recently, or I guess most famously, was executive chef at Nixta uh, in Tower Grove area. And so now he has come back with Alta Calle. This is from the folks, the owners of uh, Las Palmas, uh, for those of you familiar with them in Maplewood. Um, and so, yeah, Teo had been doing some catering and everybody was kind of like waiting for like where he was going to land. So this was is in a, the former uh, Mekong space. So it's a really big, it's like a long shotgun type space. But it's like 97 seats, something like that. Uh, but his the food there is just, it's absolutely, it's very authentic Mexican food, but very, uh, very fresh and uh, sim- deceptively simple. And he's kind of a superstar chef. Does this yeah. remain sort of that casual South Grand kind of vibe, or it is it really, a little fancier? No, it really does. It's very much a neighborhood place. It's very, I mean, you know, it's kind of like if you go in there, they have like, you know, sort of like the, your ubiquitous um, bullfighter painting. And, you know, there's like a, uh, one of the things I thought was really funny is like a, from the movie, um, uh, what was that, the the Disney movie? Um, oh, um the animated one in Mexico. What's it called? Yes. You know, a- I any- have kids. I should I know, know this. I have no idea. Everyone, anyway. everyone is screaming at us <laughs> right now. <laughs> they, I know, right? They, um, <laughs> Tell they, us what they, we're they had like a They had like a little uh, guitar from that movie, you know, souvenir Coco. guitar. Coco. Thank oh, you. Yes, yes, of course. Sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> we got it. Don't panic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of kitschy, kind of fun, real casual, uh, real laid back atmosphere. But just, I mean, the food was just incredible. Um, the, the, the tacos, everything. Uh, one of the things we really like was the pollo pipion, which is like a grilled chicken breast with like this rich green mole pipion sauce. 
um, with veggies and herbs and just, you know, rice and beans, but everything, I mean, even the guacamole has like pickled shallot and a little mm-hmm. bit of mint. I mean, everything that it's very simple, but I hate to, I mean, this is a word I hate, but elevated. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. It always it, there's always a little something. There's a little extra. something more, and and it's always so pretty. He is the master of like visual presentation yeah, too. Absolutely. Remember that from Nick's dad. His food gorgeous. comes out, and it's right. just it's got so many colors. You didn't know your your dish could be so colorful, and everything's edible. So there's like flowers strewn all over the plate, but you can eat. It's it's gorgeous. So if I you're into Instagram food. and you also like good yes, food, this might go. be where to go. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Talk about another really attractive space. I think the Last Kitchen. Downtown. For sure, for sure. So uh, this is located inside the new Last Hotel, which which is in the renovated International Shoe Company building down on Wash Ave, near, right next to City Museum. And it is gorgeous in there. Like, if you go for nothing else, d- do it for the gram. It's it's like going into Don Draper's hotel. It's fantastic. The mid-century modern vibe is beautiful. Um, it's also very comfortable. The, the colors are light and bright. Um, and the, the, the restaurant itself is very much open to the public. They want it to be a, a just as much a public dining space as, as a hotel space. So executive chef Evie Swoboda um, is sort of running the, the entire show there. She has formerly been at, at uh, niche food groups, specifically Pastoria, Sardella, things like that. She's created some really fantastic entrees. Um, there's a roasted half chicken. They're very deceptively simple. It just says like roasted half chicken with burr blanc and gnocchi on the menu, but it's perfectly cooked chicken. Uh, the skin is crispy. The meat just sort of pulls apart when you go for it. The gnocchi is, is rich and that beurre blanc is, is spot on. Um, and then there's, you know, a lighter lunch menu. There's a killer steak sandwich. That's, my coworkers actually brought it back from lunch and I ate it an hour later after it had been sitting out and it was still fantastic. Wow. So yeah. I can only imagine it was <laughs> great when it hit the table. <laughs> um, and then you can tell she definitely has a background in pasta and experience working in, in Girard's more Italian-focused restaurants. Um, there was a dish called grown-up garlic noodles, which is just tagliatelle, uh, house-made tagliatelle and like a fermented black garlic sauce. So it's really deceptively simple again, but but just a really, really delicious thought out complex dish um she really t- goes to the effort too of doing um, a lot of housemade things so like the housemade pickle appetizer is whatever things she has that need to be pickled so they don't go bad then they're battered and fried you know she makes her own house hot sauce and then takes the mash left over from the fermentation dehydrates it and uses it to season the house chips so there's a lot of thoughtfulness of trying to be as as uh, least as little waste as possible. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, in in these dishes, which is good when you're working on such a large scale as as a hotel and trying to do catering and and room service and things like that too. You can tell there's a lot of thought to try to to get the most out of what she's got. So it's it's a very cool space and a very great restaurant. So that's in a very stylish setting. Yes. Um, going South City. Let's talk about Ursa Minor Coffee. Yes. Um, so um, Ursa Minor just opened up uh, recently this summer, um, and so. Um, You'll, you'll, people will probably remember it as being formerly the living room. So it was the South City uh, location of the living room uh, that was made famous in Maplewood. Um, so one of their uh, baristas, Ben Holzer, actually bought the uh, uh, the uh, bought them out, basically uh, uh, assumed control and uh, named it Ursa Minor. And he is doing some really interesting, you know, uh, coffee type drinks. He, one of the ones we really like was the uh, iced banana milk latte, mm. which, yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, coffee and banana actually is a really good combo. You know, it's not maybe really intuitive, but it was really good. Um, and then uh, one of the, the ones we noticed that was another unusual one was the Misaguru latte. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, that's a, it's a Korean grain powder uh so it's kind of brings this like, like od texture to the latte it's really really nice stuff um so that uh yeah i guess they opened up june i believe this is if you're an adventurous coffee drinker it sounds like you want yeah, to get you their can also, stat yeah uh, but you can also you know get a i'm sure you know a, a really great pour over as well which i did not do but you know yeah they, yeah, yeah they do have standard pour overs and standard sure. espresso sure. drinks too if you just want your your normal latte they can you they can also take adventurous. Adventurous. exactly no. and they're connected to craft beer cellar so if you also want to go buy a six pack oh, there you go yeah. Two birds, one stone. Well, that's a great transition to my beverage of choice. Let's talk about <laughs> Chateau Maplewood. Uh, so this is Maplewood's newest wine bar. It's also Maplewood's newest bottle shop. Um, this is a great little setup. Uh, you go in, they offer a dozen or so wines by the glass of the bar and a handful of bar snacks, hummus, wine, crackers, little charcuterie board. Nothing super fancy, but exactly what you want when you're really just going to taste. 
Um, I believe when we originally were talking to the owner back when he was concepting it, he really wanted to be a place that you go either before or after hitting one of the bigger restaurants in the right. area. His idea, there are a lot of restaurants. There's right a there. lot of restaurants. Exactly. There's and, a lot of competition. That's right. Great. And he, he wasn't trying to be a restaurant so much as a place to go for pre dinner or post dinner drinks um, or a little snack beforehand. Um, the prices are really, really reasonable. One of the cool things is anything you try there, you can then buy a bottle of. Um, the best way that I found to experience it was they have a choose your own adventure wine flight. You can pick any of the 10 or so bottles behind the bar. You get three three ounce pours. And then for $15. And then if you find a new favorite, you can just buy it right there. We actually went and ended up leaving with two bottles because I mine, I think one was $18, which I can't say once you've been able to have a glass of it, it's, it was a really nice experience. So mm-hmm. it's it's a cool little place. Um, they do a lot of special events. I know they're working on some live music. They have right now, I think it's free yoga on Sunday mornings yeah. where you can go and then buy a glass of wine afterwards because that's exactly what you should do after yoga. <laughs> yeah. Um, it yeah, really so, is. It's a, it's a great place. I mean, I live in that neighborhood. And so I've walked down there and done a couple of happy hours. And and uh, yeah, it's just really comfortable. Owners are very personable, um, really willing to ask any question, answer any questions. Uh, yeah, it's just a nice, nice place to pop in. Matt, uh, can you tell us about barbecue on the loop? That's a totally different vibe yes, here. Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is it's a uh, barbecue is a um, a Korean rice bowl place. Um, so it's got a small menu, really tightly focused, um, and you can do things like a half and a half bowl where you can try all the four protein options um, at the same time. Um, you can get rice, greens, choice of like beef bulgogi, spicy chicken, spicy pork, uh, tofu, uh, if you are not uh, a carnivore. And, um, it's, they also do things like miso soup, dumplings, sort of like your, your kind of quick, um, uh, casual uh, Korean type food. Catherine, then there's a another hot new bar. Tell us about yeah, for up, sure. Down, so this is this is one that's been a long time coming in the Central West End. It's in the old Herbie space. Up Down is uh, an arcade bar uh, chain that's in the Midwest. This will be the uh, fifth location, I believe, for them. Um, this is very much like a millennials paradise. It's a uh, the 80s and 90s arcade games. Three different bars, so you never have to wait for a drink. Huge beer selection, pizza by the slice. It's a great new nightlife spot in the Central West End. And Matt and Catherine are also recommending La Bamba downtown. Um, but at this point, unfortunately, we've run out of time on today's show. So Catherine no Claney, managing editor of Sauce Magazine, and Matt Sorrell, staff writer at Sauce, thank you for joining us today to talk about these new restaurants. Well, thank thank you. you. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com. The Gateway brings you the day's news from the St. Louis region and across Missouri. It also includes stories from the Illinois side of the river and our Metro East reporter, Will Bauer. In Alton, in Belleville, in East St. Louis, in Edwardsville, in Cahokia Heights, at Scott Air Force Base, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Listen to reports from Will and all of our journalists weekdays on The Gateway, on the STLPR app, and wherever you get podcasts.